Hi, this is Regaline Sabat, also known as Gigi. You're listening to Walk With Me Podcast. My guest today is Susan Pierce. Susan Pierce is the host of Eden's Living TV radio, and she writes for Christian media. Welcome to the show, Susan. Thank you so much for having me, Gigi. I've been looking so forward to this. Likewise, it's an honor to have you here today. Now, why don't you start off by telling us about you and where you are from? I am from Jackson, Mississippi. I graduated from Mississippi State, and uh, I've been on a 20-year journey of getting well after a five-car pileup. So uh, I do. I wear a lot of hats. I'm a TV media personality. I'm a writer. I do radio, but I also try to work with you know and save traffic kids and really help people that have addiction and post-traumatic stress is really where my, my heart lies. That is absolutely amazing. Now tell us more about Eden's Living TV. And as you and I spoke about, Eden is my middle name. So it's amazing. I know. There's no accidents in life. It's amazing how God kind of brings us together. You know, we're supposed to work together and collaborate. But Eden's Living was really just born out of, tell you the truth, it was a journey of literal hell. Uh, I was in a five car pileup, uh, was a biotech pharmaceutical rep and my own medical industry created an attic for 20 years. And for 20 years, I laid in bed, went from a size eight to a size 22 gain. I got up to 257 pounds, addicted to opiates and was on 14 medications. And I really had to heal myself. And in that journey, of learning how to naturopathically take people back to the Garden of Eden and show them how they can heal and how they can detox. And you really can change your life no matter how old you are. You can go back to the Garden of Eden and you can find your health and healing. That is absolutely amazing. Now, you also write for Christian media. Tell us more about what inspired you to write for Christian media. And I tell you what, a little shout out to Jackie Carpenter. I don't know if you know Jackie, but she is in the media world herself and had the Christian View magazine and TV. And when I was coming back into society and really didn't know what I wanted to do, here I was an ex-pharmaceutical rep, now a naturopath. And I had this amazing testimony of losing 150 pounds and getting sober and then helping all the kids that I do in sex trafficking. Jackie saw me and she's like, you have so much to offer the world you really need to be heard. And she gave me my first break in professional writing. Uh, I don't know if y'all know out there, but anytime you're published in the media world, it's an honor. And I take that honor very seriously. And when I write, I try to teach. I try to teach hope and I try to teach healing. But I wrote for the Christian. I still write for the Christian View. I was writing for Hope Magazine and now I'm writing for myself and I'm about to publish my first book. I love it. Now, you are also a human trafficking advocate. What inspired you to become a yes. human trafficking advocate? Probably about five years ago, the Highland Church here in Birmingham, Alabama, I went to a small group meeting, a prayer meeting, and we had one of the, the Hope for, uh, actually it's called Wellhouse, and then Hope for Justice, another area I work, organization I worked with. But Hope for Justice, really in the Birmingham area, I wanted to get on the streets. I wanted to have an impact where I saw where my time, where my money was going. And we used to meet on Monday afternoons at noon. We'd meet in the McDonald's and we'd get together and pray because anytime you deal with sex trafficking, you are dealing with demonic spirits. We're talking about the most evil of the evil. You know, there's so many different ways you can sell a human being in human sex trafficking and in biomedical trafficking are two of the biggest out there. And I went out and started praying and I saw women that when I looked in their eyes, they were, they were dead. They were screaming for help and they were hopeless. And I never will forget the first time that I went out with hope for justice and laid my little laid my hands on a pimp. He was holding uh, by the breast, the woman by the breast, like this is my property. She's not going with you. Hope for Justice and Wellhouse tries to literally get these kids off the streets and give them a safe place. Wellhouse is wonderful for that. And I remember laying my hands on this gentleman and both him and his wife or traffic woman that he called his wife started crying and accepted Jesus right there. And I will never forget that feeling and seeing 14, 15 year old girls driving up with you know men in the back seat to go have sex it, it just broke me and i knew that i had to get involved somehow 
And so I started doing uh, Hope for Justice, which led to meeting other organizations, like I said, um, Hope for Justice, Wellhouse. And then I started working with a task force that was under Trump. And we would go get intel, look for where kids could be trafficked, like hotels or different. Like in Arkansas, one of the, the trips that I went, there was a 10 gym that looked like it was a car dealership. That They had the, the um, fence on the inside where you couldn't climb out. It was barricaded. So we would go get exit points, any entryway points, and then pass that on to another part of our task force that would then go in and save the children. So I have seen in field work, I've seen, you know, and heard stories here locally of 14 year old children running away and men having cages waiting for them at their house. And when I started understanding that that was three blocks from my house, I had to get involved. So that's kind of how I started getting involved in the sex trafficking business. That is very powerful. You also attended our global virtual panel of human trafficking survivors event. What was your biggest takeaway? Those people are amazing. And these people that have literally lived through human trafficking, sex trafficking, just the fact that they survived and that they're telling their story to help other people, it just empowered me. And I was amazed. And thank you so much for putting that summit on, because I think if we bring awareness to how common this is, I think we can get more society involved where they really just want to kind of like mm, turn their head. This is something I don't want to know about. It's too, too painful but we've got to save our kids. Y'all got to realize that this happens in your own neighborhood. Sex trafficking is very prevalent. That's right. Very powerful. Now tell us more about your experience of being sober for eight years. I had to find my freedom. I laid in a bed, you know, I was in that five car pileup and they got me addicted to 380 milligrams of Oxycontin. That's 38 times the normal dose and like Xanax and 14 other mood altering things. I was crushed in a, a five car pileup. And for 20 years, I literally was just drugged out of my mind. I never got married, never had kids. And I remember laying there in bed one night and I said, Jesus, I know I can't kill myself because I belong to you. But you have to show up here and you have to help me because just laying in a bed out of my mind with no touch, no love, no communication. I said, God, that's just existing. And I started praying and God started revealing to me ways to heal myself. And when I started learning to forgive those that hurt me and abandoned me, the weight just fell off. And the process of getting sober was one of the hardest things I've ever done. But once you walk through that fire, I really can see addiction in other people. I can see anxiety in other people and I can see depression. And it's amazing when you go up to someone and says, you know what? I was you. I just got a friend of mine off a pain pump, Gigi. She That's saw my story, followed my story. Matter of fact, I went back home to Mississippi. We were teammates. And I literally was on the phone with her and I think she passed. She was had a pain pump. It stopped working. She went into withdrawal. She said she literally started having hallucinations, seeing demons, seeing hell, was on the phone with me. And I was like, Kelly, you're here with me. Come back to me. And after that experience, I worked with her. And now I can say today that she is off the pain pump, off all the uh, nerve stimulators they had in her. And she's going to learn how to use nature to heal. And that's why God let me live and let my story be heard so I can help other addicts take back their lives and also be sober. It's empowering. Yes, ma'am. Very powerful. Thank you for sharing that. Now tell us more about a time in your life where you experienced an aha moment. The aha moment was when I got into media, believe it or not. When I realized that I had a story and no matter what other people's story was, I had to stick to my story. This is who I am. This is who I am authentically. And you can't listen to the voices beside you. You can't look to your right and you can't look to your left because you've gotten a gift that only God gave you and you have to give that to the world. And you can't look to the side and get validation from media. You can't get validation from a man. You can't even get validation from y'all sisters as much as I love Gigi. I can't get my validation from you. That only comes from God. And I think at 53 years old, that was my biggest aha moment was like, I have a gift. I'm going to give that gift to the world. And no matter what anybody calls me, labels me, tries to judge me, 
I'm authentic and I'm going to give that gift for God. And that's my gift to you. I love it. Now you mentioned God quite often. How important is your relationship with God to you? Oh my goodness. God is the essence of who I am. If I didn't have the Holy spirit in me to give me the fire, to be able to get up and detox and stay off drugs. You know, people always say there's this universal source, this universal fire, this universal energy. I myself worship. I'm a Jesus Christ lover, but I do, you know, honor other faiths, but that's what gets me up out of bed. That's what keeps me sober. That's what keeps me thin. I'm not 267 pounds dying of organ failure. And the only way that I got out of bed was through that power of the Holy Spirit. And it truly is fire that lives in me. It, it's the Holy Temple. I let him reside in me and I try to give hope to everybody I meet. It's like you can get well. You know, if you have addiction, you can get sober. You know, if you're in pain, God will give you comfort. And those are lessons that I had to learn for 20 years. And I'll tell you what today, GD, it's a hard day today because today is Let's see, I lost my mom in 2004 on this day, and usually I'm very depressed and very withdrawn on this day, but today I have a lot of joy because I know that my mother's spirit lives in me, and she has taught me just a lot of confidence and able to come back and just be who I am. So I honor my mama today. Amen. <clears throat> what is your mother's name? <laughs> my mother's name is uh, Patricia, was Patricia Van Dyne Pierce. Patricia. Well, today we honor Patricia. Patricia. Yes, ma'am. You. You're welcome. Now, what is your best advice to the audience for walking with purpose and living a life of happiness? Oh, well, it's to literally find what you enjoy. You have got to find and look within yourself and find out, you know, when I was trying to find who I was after I was bed bound, I went back to the things that made me happy. I started going back to Mississippi State football, you know, getting back in the batting cages, doing things I loved as I was a girl. And my biggest advice to people is just do what you love. Find out what you enjoy giving to the world and then nourish that, you know, empower that, share that with other people. But if you don't live an authentic life, you will never find happiness and you'll never find really the wholeness that God intended you to do. Amen. I love it. Live an authentic life. Very powerful. Authentic. Yes, ma'am. Well, you're now, the what only one that can be you. You're it. I mean, God gave you a divine design. You are made in his image. He placed his holy breath in you, you know, and when you find that breath and you can get out and, and give them that, everybody's got a story, Gigi. Every woman and man listening, even children, you have a story of what you've lived through and what your experience is. Why don't you just give that back to the world and show them who you are authentically and the, the world will love you. They really will. If you just be yourself, how can you not be attracted to that? Amen. Now, where can the audience find you? You can find me. Now, I have my my TV show, Eden's Living TV. You can find us on Christian Television Network, Channel 16. Also out of Atlanta, Channel 57, and out of the Carolinas. But when we do my show, we upload it to YouTube. We'll be uploading to a new website. And also, you can find me on Parlor. We'll be uploading to BitChute. I do a lot of things in Instagram and YouTube. I'm starting to do a lot more teaching. We're hopefully going to have a new blog and website up to have all of my teaching videos to be able to empower people to get healthy and to find that authentic self that I've been preaching about. Absolutely amazing. I love it. And thank you for being a guest on Walk With Me podcast, Susan. I appreciate you. Uh, and you you're quite welcome. Quite welcome. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome.